Dr. Mercier Dionway, internal medicine and hospitalist, joins us uh, from Texas in the U.S. Uh, to talk more about this. Thanks for joining us on the program. What's your take on the origins of the virus, COVID-19? Well, thank you for having me. Uh, my take is we still don't have a definitive, uh, we still don't have a definitive uh, way or knowledge of exactly how COVID-19 came about in humans. We just know that there is a virus very similar to COVID-19 in horseshoe bats that are uh, that have been seen in Wuhan, China, and so how that similar virus now suddenly mutated to COVID-19 or how COVID-19 originated from that is what we don't know. There are talks that there may have been an intermittent animal called a peglion, which is like an anteater that can be sold in wet markets, uh, particularly seen in Wuhan, China, that that may have been the vector that may have mutated the virus in which humans got it. But these are all speculations. So. Um, I'm curious to see when we'll find this definitive answer, but as of yet, it's still speculative. And another question is the role of the WHO in all of this, because there is an angle that the lab leak theory originated with a clutch of anti-China uh, perception in the State Department under former President Trump. Um, so, I mean, the claims are from bioweapon to a lab uh, leak there. But do you think that we will come to the bottom of, indeed, where the virus came from at the end of the day? I mean, I hope we do. I mean, like you had just mentioned, there is a political aspect to all of this. And, and it didn't help that in the beginning when COVID emerged that, you know, China was a little bit secretive in terms of uh, information. And so I feel that that helped propagate why people were thinking that there was a lab leak. Um, but I think as we start to investigate, as people are starting to tease out, leaders of the world are starting to tease out, the World Health Organization are starting to tease out information, that we will soon come to know what exactly ha happened. But so I think patience would be the key in this case. All right, let's go to U.S. health officials, you know, given the final sign of Pfizer's uh, kid-sized COVID-19 shots, a major expansion in the country's vaccination campaign. Um, tell us, is it a different size type from what the adults are taking? Yes, yes, you're correct. Um, from what the Pfizer study has shown, um, they've actually are giving one third of a dose um, of the adult form of COVID vaccination, so about 10 micrograms. And they've shown that when they give those doses, as, as reported earlier, that there is about a 90% effectiveness of prevention of COVID-19. And they're also noticing um, not as severe adverse effects. And so um, that's currently what uh, the children here in the U.S. are getting. And that is the concern about the myocarditis, the inflammatory heart condition. Correct, correct. So, um, and, and what they're noticing in that particular study as well is they haven't really seen any cases of myocarditis in children as of yet. Granted, the study uh, sample size was small and they're continuing to monitor it, but uh, so far they haven't seen any cases of that. Um, some speculate that the reason why you see it in adolescents is this myocarditis not only is tied to the vaccination, but because adolescents tend to have higher uh, levels of hormones due to puberty, that may also be linkage to that, to that myocarditis condition. But it's interesting to know that so far, even though there are myocarditis uh, cases in adolescents, there still hasn't been a death as reported um, as a result of that condition. Let's talk about last weekend, an Alberta member of legislature saying COVID-19 protesters came to her house, hung up a news. I mean, quite disturbing the threats and intimidation um, from protesters who feel COVID-19 isn't real. And see, that's the, that's the problem um, that we're having here in the States. The idea of misinformation, the idea of... Um, um, misinformation just propagating a lot of these protests. Um, because, I, I mean, for me, because of how it was initially handled and how uh, it became politicized, you're having these demonstrations. And, and it's, not doing, it's not doing anything good as far as cases. It's, 
it's, it's allowing the COVID-19 virus to continue to reign in, in the population. Um, so I think we, the American people need to calm down just a little bit and let's go to the facts. What exactly is COVID-19? What can we do to pre prevent it? And what it is to keep our family and ourselves safe? Dr. Mercy Adionwe, hospitalist, internal medicine. Always a pleasure. Thank you for joining us. Thank you so much.